What's that? It's the Dreadnoughts and the Thunder Machine. I've got to warn the Joes. It's the G.I. Joe Checkpoint Alpha. With Snake Eyes and Alpine. Snake Eyes, call General Hawk on the telephone and tell him the Dreadnoughts are coming. Why aren't you calling? I can see my house from up here. Quick, close the gate. Everyone knows Dreadnoughts obey all posted traffic signs. We stopped them. Yo, Joe. It's the G.I. Joe checkpoint with Snake Eyes and Alpine. Place it and figures sold separately. here it's time for another vintage G.I. Joe tour review and finally I can review the 1985 G.I. Joe checkpoint and this is another one for which I must thank Arthur. Arthur sent me a box full of G.I. Joe toys. I did an unboxing video. It was awesome. This toy was in the box and finally I'm able to review it. So thank you, Arthur. Someone has been requesting this review ever since I took this toy out of that box. And believe me, I wanted to review this toy right away too. But the scheduling on these reviews can be a little bit tricky. For instance, that same box gave me the idea to do Tiger Force Month and that took up a whole month. And after that, I needed to review another vehicle and I wanted to to get back to Cobra and so I, I after that I wanted to do a little bit more of Cobra but then it wasn't the right time to do another vehicle or playset I usually do those at the top of the month so I needed to do a couple more figures so I did grunt I did low light and finally now at the beginning of June I am ready to do this review HCC 788 presents the 1985 GI Joe checkpoint this is G.I. Joe's Checkpoint from 1985. It was available in retail stores in 1985 and 1986. It was discontinued for the year 1987. It was available for mail away uh, from 1988 to 1991. The Checkpoint was one of the Battle Station playsets, which were small playsets, but larger than the Battlefield accessories, like the Machine Gun Defense Unit here. As you can see, the Machine Gun Defense Unit is smaller and not an integrated playset. The Checkpoint pairs well with another battle station, the 1984 Watchtower. I don't have the Watchtower yet, but when I get one and I review it, I will compare it with the Checkpoint. I think they do match up well. Although the box for the Checkpoint only calls it a Checkpoint, it's often referred to as Checkpoint Alpha, because that's what it says on the toy. Checkpoint Alpha is probably a reference to the famous Checkpoint Charlie, also known as Checkpoint C. It was a well-known crossing point between East Berlin and West Berlin during the Cold War. In 1961, to prevent mass emigration from the eastern Soviet-controlled Germany, a wire fence was erected along the border between East and West Berlin. Later, a wall was constructed. Uh, there were a few passages through the wall, with Checkpoint C being the only one designated for use by Allied forces. There was a real Checkpoint Alpha and a Checkpoint Bravo. Checkpoint Alpha was the helmstedt marienborn border crossing. Checkpoint Charlie was better known, but Checkpoint Alpha was the busiest crossing. Point. Let's look at the parts and the features of the checkpoint. Now, I have it in what I would consider to be the correct orientation. It has the checkpoint alpha sticker in front, the door for the guard post on the side with the red gate behind it. On the top we have the observation deck uh, and it has three foot pegs and a metal texture pattern on the floor. It has four accessories, one for each corner, and they are interchangeable so you can put them in any configuration you want. Here we have what the blueprints call a long body high rate I-15 submachine gun. This is really too large to be a submachine gun and this is a remold of the machine gun that came with the 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center. Uh, the headquarters gun was just called a 20 millimeter machine gun. The checkpoint reuses that mold for the HQ machine gun but with a shorter barrel. Now the 1983 machine gun was a clip-on uh, but the checkpoint machine gun is on a peg so it can swivel and that's better. Next we have what the blueprints call the VC HR8 auto scan infrared camera. This is another reuse from the 1983 headquarters command center. It reuses that same infrared camera but again a peg instead of a clip-on. Next we have what the blueprints call a tungsten 
Spanned Beam Searchlight. At first glance, it looks like this is a smaller version of the searchlight that came with the 1983 Headquarters Command Center, but it isn't. It is entirely different. And finally, we have the antenna. There's not much to say about it. It's an antenna. The observation deck is held up by four beams that attach to the base, and around the back we have a ladder that goes up to this opening in the back so that Joes can climb up there and man the observation deck. I'm going to remove the observation deck and the beams and the ladder so we can get a better look at the guard post. The guard post has this little opening for personnel to get inside, uh, and we have some fair detail. We have what looks like a radar screen, even though this playset does not have a radar dish. Uh, we have a couple odd control panels, and then we have the clipboard. This clipboard is tiny and frequently lost. Uh, it can peg in. Uh, it has a peg and it fits on that hole there. And it has a sticker that says spot check. Oh, look, I found a spot. The clipboard can fit in a figure's hand, and for some figures it won't fall out. It's kind of thin, and some figures can't hold it very well. We have a gate, appropriately red. Uh, it has a stop sign, a couple reflectors, and over here we have a handle for swinging the gate open and closed. The gate pegs into this post right here, uh, and it does swing quite freely. Finally, we have the speed bump, and I have to say, I really like this. It's very clever to include this. This is a nice detail that might easily have been left out, but it really completes the set. The speed bump is not attached to anything. It's just a separate piece of plastic with a sticker on it, so you can place it anywhere you want. Uh, I think it should go right about there. Who should man Checkpoint Alpha? The box art for the playset shows Mutt and his dog Junkyard, and I think that's good. Mutt really works well as a guard. The box art also features Alpine. Alpine is not a guard. He's a mountain trooper, but I I think he looks pretty good up there. There is one more figure that I think goes very well with Checkpoint Alpha, although the figure was not available when this toy was released. In 1987, G.I. Joe got its military policeman, Law, with his dog, Order. Law just seems to belong with this playset. A military policeman manning the Checkpoint, that's just perfect. As far as I can tell, Checkpoint Alpha did not make any appearances in G.I. Joe media. Not in the cartoon, not in the comic book, and that's really too bad because it easily could have been worked into both the cartoon and the comic book. For instance, in the G.I. Joe comic book, G.I. Joe had a secret base, the pit, and at first it was on an army base, so the checkpoint could have been featured on that army base. Later it was moved out to the desert, they could have featured the checkpoint out there. In the cartoon series, G.I. Joe had a very large, very not secret base, and the checkpoint could have been featured at the gate for their giant base. These small playsets did not get a lot of love in G.I. Joe media, and I'm not sure why. The purpose of these playsets was to build the G.I. Joe play world for kids, and that was also the purpose of the cartoon series and the comic book. So why could these not have worked together? You could have included something like the checkpoint without changing the story in the cartoon or the comic book at all. Just, just have it there. Looking at the checkpoint overall, the checkpoint is not a top tier playset, but that's not really fair because among playsets, you're looking at the 1983 Headquarters Command Center, the 1985 USS Flag, the 1986 Terror Drone, and those were huge playsets and the checkpoint doesn't really stack up against those, but if you compare it with other playsets of its class, it does stack up very nicely. It has plenty of play features, it has the swinging gate, it has the multiple accessories on the observation deck, it has plenty going on for it. Reviewing these small play sets is always tricky because they don't give you a lot to talk about because they're small, but this play set gave me the opportunity to talk about the Cold War, and that's been a recurring theme in these videos. G.I. Joe was firmly planted in the Cold War. Growing up as an American kid at the end of the Cold War was a unique experience. It was different from the experience of adults who lived at that time, and it was very different from the next generation who didn't experience the Cold War at all. Reviewing G.I. Joe toys has allowed me to explore those experiences and memories and put them in perspective. So reviewing G.I. Joe toys has benefited me personally in ways that I never expected it would when I started. That was my review of the 1985 G.I. Joe Checkpoint. I hope you enjoyed it. And a quick announcement, JoeCon, the International G.I. Joe Convention, is coming up this month, and I will be there. The weekend of JoeCon, I will not have a new review video up. I did the same thing last year. During the time I would be recording the video, I won't be home. But I will be at JoeCon, and if you can make it to Loveland, Colorado, you 
you should be there too. And if you do go to JoeCon and you see me, make sure you say hi. We have one more review video to do before JoeCon, so check back next week. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. What's that? It's the Dreadnoughts and the Thunder Machine. I've got to warn the Joes. It's the G.I. Joe Checkpoint Alpha with Snake Eyes and Alpine. Snake Eyes, call General Hawk on the telephone and tell him the Dreadnoughts are coming. Why aren't you calling? I can see my house from up here. Quick, close the gate. Everyone knows Dreadnoughts obey all posted traffic signs. We stopped them. Yo, Joe. It's the G.I. Joe Checkpoint with Snake Eyes and Alpine. Place it and figures sold separately. Then I've got to back up. Back up. Is anybody got a dime? Oh, yeah. I don't have a dime. Somebody's got to go back and get a shitload of dimes. Oh, yeah.